Dear friends, just wanted to um, ask for your attention for a few minutes with some uh, important news uh, regarding COVID-19 and vaccine efficacy. And um, this piece of news in, in particular comes from the CDC um, on Friday, July the 30th. And um, the report, as you see here, is that there has been an outbreak of COVID-19 cases, or infections, uh, that included COVID-19 vaccine breakthrough infections um, associated with some large public gatherings in Barnstable County, Massachusetts. And what they report here, and what, why I think this is really uh, important and interesting, is that they report um, as a consequence uh, of some public gatherings in Barnstable County there in Massachusetts from the first part of July through mid-July. Uh, there have been some gatherings in a specific town. They don't mention exactly what town that was. Uh, those uh, meetings were advertised uh, particularly to a male audience, and, and uh, then they've seen this outbreak of COVID-19 cases. And what is interesting about this is that, number one, uh, in Massachusetts, 69% of the population in that area has been already vaccinated. Uh, about 46% of them with the Pfizer's vaccine, another 38% with Moderna's, and about 16% with Janssen's. And so a really good rate of vaccination to the level that you would expect to see herd immunity. Number two, the other interesting thing here is that they have uh, uh, identified through case uh, tracking and then diagnosis uh, of, of, uh, of infection, they have identified uh, about 469 cases uh, that were positive for COVID-19. Now, um, if you see here, of those 469, 74% uh, or 346 were among those who had been vaccinated previously with one of those three vaccines that I mentioned. Uh, so this is the concerning piece of news here, that basically about three quarters, three quarters of infections in this cluster of outbreak were among the vaccinated. And when they did genetic testing on the samples of virus, um, that they, um, that they isolated from these cases. They found the Delta variant in 89% of the cases, and in 1% of cases, they found a variant of Delta. So about 90% of cases with the Delta variant. Not only that, the rest of 10% said, they said they, the test was not of good quality, so we couldn't really tell which variant it was. So it's quite possible that a great, the vast majority, really, of these cases were with the Delta variant. Um, and, and then here is the even more interesting uh, part of this. Among those who had been vaccinated and, and were diagnosed with this condition, with this, uh, in this outbreak, about 79%, almost 80% of those uh, were symptomatic. In other words, not only did they develop the COVID-19 infection despite having been vaccinated before, but they developed a symptomatic, uh, about 80% of them developed symptoms, the typical COVID symptoms, starting with fever, headache, shortness of breath, sore throat, cough, fatigue, and all of that. And out of 274 symptomatic previously vaccinated people for, uh, against COVID from this cohort, about four of them ended up in the hospital. They were hospitalized. And then from the others who were not vaccinated and got sick, one was also hospitalized. So out of the five hospitalized patients, four, or about 80% again, had been vaccinated before. Now, fortunately, nobody has died. None of them apparently developed a severe case of COVID. Some are still in the hospital. And they also mentioned that most of these people, whether we're talking about the one who was not vaccinated or the other four who had been vaccinated, uh, a majority of them had a number of comorbid conditions, other health issues that made them perhaps more vulnerable to, may, to develop a more severe case of COVID. Um, and um, so what can we, what conclusions can we draw from this outbreak? 
Um, number one, it's quite obvious that the Delta variant of the virus is pretty much resistant to all the vaccines that we currently have. We have to uh, leave the door open here and state that these were diagnosed cases. Uh, it's quite likely that a number of asymptomatic people never got diagnosed, so we don't really know uh, the right proportion of, of, of uh, how many people who had been vaccinated before actually developed some form of infection. In other words, we don't quite know what the ratio of asymptomatic versus symptomatic people were in this, cohort, in this outbreak. Um, so we have to take those numbers uh, with some caution. Number two, and part of this study that I haven't mentioned yet, is that when they compare the viral load, the amount of virus in these patients between those who had been vaccinated versus those who hadn't been vaccinated before, they found similar viral loads. For one thing, we know the Delta variant causes a thousand times more virus to, to, to um, multiply levels of, of about a thousand times more than other variants before to be present in the bloodstream of these people uh, even early in the disease. But more importantly and concerning in my opinion here is when they compare the amount of virus in those who had been vaccinated versus those who had not been vaccinated, they have found similar levels. Again, these things could be influenced by other factors, but the fact that the amount of virus is the same further indicates that this Delta variant is resistant to the vaccine. So the question is, where do we go from here? Do we give up on the vaccine and uh, resign ourselves to get sick and whatever happens, happens? I don't think so. I think there is still, in, in larger population groups, such as in Israel, for example, there is enough data showing that those who had been vaccinated still benefit from being protected from more serious uh, forms of the disease, and the breakthrough cases of COVID-19 infection among the vaccinated in Israel in much larger groups of people in that country occur predominantly in people who had either a weak immune system, they were immunocompromised for a reason or another, or who had multiple comorbidities, and, and those in turn affected their immune system in a way that they either didn't develop a good antibody response to the vaccine in the first place, or um, secondarily, their immune system wasn't able to, to defend and maintain, perhaps, a good enough protection on the long term. So the vaccine is still indicated, it's still helpful, and uh, we'll have to see in the, uh, in, in the next few weeks uh, what exactly happens with the protection over the longer term. The data in the UK is very encouraging in that respect, although the important thing to keep in mind about the UK is that they have vaccinated their people 8 to 12 weeks apart, those who have received two doses of vaccine, as opposed to the US and Israel and other places where the vaccination has been done three weeks or four weeks apart, uh, in the case of Pfizer and Moderna, respectively. The other thing that I think is pretty clear is that we're going to witness a new wave of COVID-19 infection, and that's why we see the CDC and, and uh, governors in some states and local authorities coming back in force and advising masking indoors, avoiding large gatherings, mandating masks in schools and other places like that. Uh, it's the reality of and the nature of this virus that mutates and changes over time. It's an mRNA virus and coronaviruses in, uh, notoriously are known to have this property. That's why we really don't have a good vaccine or a good treatment against the common cold which is caused by coronaviruses. The only problem is this particular coronavirus is not just a common cold, it actually kills people. And so, as I mentioned in another uh, video, in the US alone, it is estimated that the vaccine has saved so far, uh, through the end of June, almost 280,000 people who would have otherwise died if they had not been vaccinated. So I think we should not rush and and trash the vaccines and say, you know, see, they're worthless, I told you so, and so forth. We have to be balanced. We have to look at these things with, with objectivity and await more data 
but I think there is enough concern here that that we are seeing um, resistance to the vaccine to a more to a to a more significant level than I would have expected, or others have expected. And number two, that at some point a booster vaccine updated to cover these new variants will most likely be necessary. Let me know what you think, what your thoughts are, uh, to the extent that time allows. I um, enjoy uh, interacting with you on this topic and others. Until next time, stay healthy.